All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is uh, Mysterious Ancient Text That Could Change History. Let's go. Hi, everyone. It's Katrina. Number Hello. 10, the Babel Text. The Babel Text is an ancient astronomical text that's between 5,300 to 5,600 years old. It was discovered by Dr. Derek Cunningham in Lingjiatan, China. The Lingjiatan culture thrived here roughly 5,000 years ago, prospering around the same time Stonehenge was being built thousands of miles away in England. This culture in China was also busy building astronomical observatories and constructing intricate stone circles. Unfortunately, most of these structures have long since been destroyed and are now lost. Archaeologists have found a lot of treasure from the Lingjiatan culture, but one artifact that really intrigued scientists was an engraved geometric plaque showing the ancient Chinese map of heaven and earth. The drawing consists of geometric lines radiating out from an eight-pointed star, and each line has a corresponding number beside it. According to Derek Cunningham, it's the numbers and lines that make up the Babel text. Cunningham says when deciphered properly, we can see how the Ling Jiatan created one of the very first maps of the inner solar system. The geometric plaque mm. isn't just a random arrangement of symbols and numbers, it's a star map showing various celestial bodies and their distance from one another. This discovery is shocking if because this is the Ling factual. Jiatan were very real ancient astronomers long before we ever thought possible. These people look to the sky five. Like this would change everything. I get it. A mysterious ancient text that could change history. Guys, if this is a factual statement that's being made currently, I have no idea what the Babel text is. I've never heard of it. Um, I've never heard of this culture either. Uh, but if this is like a factual thing, this seriously could change everything we we know of um, outer space. Thousand years and ago, and, and history. And we're able to, be to make rudimentary measurements between cosmic bodies. This proves that our ancient okay. ancestors were far more intelligent than we give them credit for. I'll be honest, I pretty much give them a lot of credit. Uh, there are a lot of people who say, oh, no, we're the we're at the peak level of like, you know, education, technology. Yeah, maybe potentially. But I don't know. At the same time, and maybe technology could have just been different. Um, but I, I, I'm honestly here for the like the the restart theory. I would I definitely think think that we have restarted. I think the aliens are most likely us, but uh, super advanced us. Number nine, the Ebers Papyrus. The Ebers Papyrus is an ancient medical document that was written around 1550 BC in Egypt. Once this document was found and deciphered. It changed the way we viewed ancient Egyptian medicine. Researchers have called it the most important medical papyrus ever discovered. The document discusses everything from how to treat crocodile bites to what contraception works best. It deals with ailments such as arthritis, burns, toenail pain, and intestinal disease. It miraculously describes the circulatory system with shocking accuracy proving ancient Egyptians understood the finer details of how the heart worked. They even knew about blood vessels and psychotherapy. What's even more amazing is that the papyrus contains a brief section on how to cure mental illnesses like depression. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly who made this amazing document. It was first purchased by a collector of antiquities named George Evers from the city of Luxor in the 1870s. However, it was later gifted to the University of Leipzig in Germany, and to this day, it remains in the library. In total, there are 110 pages of unbelievably accurate medical information. This document suggests the Egyptians had more knowledge of the human body than many scientists in the Middle Ages, which wouldn't come for another 3,000 years. Number 8. The Book of Witchcraft. I'm not surprised there yet, There is a guys. terrifying book of doom currently housed at the Library of Congress. It's called The Discovery of Witchcraft, published okay. in 1584 to the outrage and shock of King James I. The book on witchcraft was Wasn't he wicked though, guys? Or to the outrage and shock. I don't know why he would be outraged. Of King James the First, the book on witchcraft was written by Reginald Scott, with one of the only remaining originals being an edition from 1651. This was one of the first books published on witchcraft in English, which was a big deal four centuries ago. Most grimoires and books on magic came from the Middle East or non-English speaking places in Europe. For an English person to write and publish a book on magic was something unheard of at the time, right, and it really bothered those in charge. 
But even imagine. though Reginald's book was written in English, most of the source material came from various books on the occult from across the globe. He put together everything he knew to create a fully functional book on divination, sorcery, dark knowledge, and everything else you would expect to find in a grimoire. It was almost like an encyclopedia dedicated to witchcraft information. One of the most interesting aspects of the book was the way Reginald portrayed practitioners of witchcraft. He claimed that witches weren't evil beings who ate frogs and sacrificed children. Instead, he described them as resourceful women who practiced folk healing and sleight of hand. Reginald tried to blend science and magic in his book to dispel nasty rumors about women and sorcerers while also being informative. Sadly, the book only led to more outrage in the religious community and more anger directed at women suspected of messing around with the dark arts. Soon after the book was published, witch hysteria spread across Europe like the plague. Number 7. The Book of Enoch The Book of Enoch is an ancient religious text that could change history if it's ever accepted by the church. Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah, it'll, it'll the same never Noah who built the, the ark church, guys. when God never... flooded the planet. His book contains information on what the world was like during the antediluvian times the period on Earth before the Biblical Flood. It mm -hmm. explains in great detail why angels turned from heaven and committed themselves to lives of sin. The Book of Enoch effectively sets up the events that come after the world is flooded and before the reign of the Messiah. However, to this day, this book is not considered canonical scripture by just about any religious group. Those from Jewish and Christian faiths don't believe anything written. Like, see, the thing about it is, is that why would you, like, if you were a re religious person, I wouldn't call myself one, right? But if you were a religious person, why would you, like, completely disregard one book, right? Like, this book is a part of that very specific storyline. So why would you throw it away? I don't understand that, guys. I never, I never did. Enoch. I never this is did. kind of strange because the book was written around 300 BC. We know this because fragments of the Book of Enoch were discovered within the Dead Sea Scrolls in Israel. The very authors of the Bible had knowledge of this ancient book. And yet, at some point in early Christianity, those in charge decided the book didn't deserve to be official canon. This was likely because of the strange topics discussed in the book. It goes into serious detail about the angelic watchers who came down from heaven and created a breed of abominations with human women. There are also other parts of the book that explain astronomy, as well as Enoch's trip to heaven guided by the angel Uriel. For whatever reason, the Book of Enoch was considered too outrageous for the church, and they likely thought people wouldn't believe in it. Either that, or its message felt too convoluted to pass on to the masses. Number 6. And that's what concerns me. Supernatural Samurai like if you're gonna believe A group in something, of supernatural believe in samurai may really have been wandering across Japan 500 years ago. A newly translated text known as the Twelve supernatural Rules of the Sword samurai. has revealed the secret of a long-lost swordsman's school. This institution supposedly taught a technique which could be viewed as otherworldly. The text dates back to the 17th okay. century, although the knowledge found within it was supposedly passed down from a samurai many years earlier in the 1500s. This mysterious samurai, known only as Itosai, allegedly Itosai. fought and won Itosai. 33 sword duels. No easy feat in ancient Japan. The legendary samurai I'm sure it won't be an easy feat now. Rai then supposedly perished at around 90 years old after passing on his lessons orally to his students. I it believe would be the another couple thing, hundred bro. years before his descendants would record his lessons in the 12 rules of the sword. The text okay. describes plenty of ways to beat an enemy physically. It goes into great detail about the most important moves and strategies for samurai swordsmen to use. But it also contains two magical prayers used to enhance a samurai's mind and spirit. Eric Shahan, a Japanese translator who specializes in ancient texts, is responsible for translating the magical ancient prayers. samurai secrets. Eric says that the samurai were encouraged to draw Sanskrit characters on their palms, including one character representing a demon. Okay. Then they would slap their palms together, quickly mutter one of the magical prayers, and rotate their hands to activate the magic. This supposedly Bro, allowed the samurai me. to look at their opponent with their spirit instead of their eyes, giving them supernatural focus and strength. Would you want to join a secret samurai school? Let me know in the comments.
bro. Below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. Yeah, guys, I'm definitely going to pass on that one. Um, I'm sure that some type of like text was found. Sure. But I don't know the validity of it very specifically. Guys. Number five, the sworn book of Honorius. The sworn book of Honorius is one of the oldest living medieval grimoires found anywhere in the world. A grimoire is a book of magic, anything which gives the reader instructions on how to cast spells or how to create magical objects like amulets. It's also okay. not uncommon for these books to show someone how to summon supernatural deities like demons or angels. Grimoires were a big deal in medieval times, as alchemy blended with witchcraft and necromancy, birthing a period in time when just about everything seemed possible through one medium or another. The sworn book of Honorius really captured the essence of magic in the Middle Ages. It was likely written at the beginning of the 13th century, although nobody's entirely sure. The book was already popular in 1347, and in 1456, Bavarian physician Johann Hartleib mentioned the book as being used in necromancy, also known as black magic. People in the Middle Ages truly believed necromancers walked among them, and that these people could use black magic to communicate with those beyond the grave. They also thought this dark magic could be used to summon spirits or even resurrect the dead. The author of the book is believed to be Honorius of Thebes, someone who may or may not have even been real. Honorius supposedly created the Theban alphabet, which was used as a substitution for the Latin alphabet by medieval occultists. However, there is no real proof that he ever lived, and he was spoken of as more of a mythical character than anything. The 93 chapters of- Yeah, that's super far, like, out of my entire, like, education base. Well, definitely picking up on a lot of things, um, specifically these grimoires. Bro, I would have never even searched out that information. Um, I'm glad I now have the information. Um, I definitely know that, like, 1500s, 1600s, things were pretty crazy regarding, like, the fear of witches. I know that even in a lot of countries in Africa, um, witches are ish an issue, right? You do not want to be called a witch, guys, uh, ever, right? Um but yeah, I never even like dove deeply into it. I just kind of brushed it off as um, something like mystical and supernatural, uh, natural. And I really always find it hard to wrap my head around the why people like it. Right? But it may just be the fact that I'm autistic and I just will probably never get it. Cause. Of his grimoire, if he truly did write it, contain one of the largest collections of forbidden knowledge of the ancient world. Number 4. The Dispilio Tablet The mysterious Dispilio Tablet Dispilio was discovered tablet. hidden inside an ancient Neolithic settlement on an artificial island in Macedonia. Okay. Researchers from the on Aristotle University island. of Thessaloniki found the treasure in 1993. It was carved by people living in the Lakeshore settlement about 8,000 years ago. The tablet is so important because it bears an inscription that dates back to a time prior to 5000 BC, making it one of the oldest undeciphered texts in the world. The existence of the tablet alone changes history for one big reason. Up until its discovery, scientists assumed the very first writing system was developed between 4000 and 3000 BC in yeah. ancient Sumer. Yeah. However, the wooden tablet was radiocarbon dated to 5260 BC. I have a problem with carbon dating, guys. This proves beyond any doubt that an ancient group of Europeans Personally. living in what would become Macedonia came up with a writing system long before the Sumerians. They created a... I mean, but guys, they would only be called Europeans nowadays. Back then, that Europe didn't exist. Came up with a writing system long before Not in the, the way Sumerians. Does, no. They created a complex system of lines and shapes to communicate with one another. Unfortunately, mm. nobody knows what the writing on the tablet says. However, Professor Hormuziadis, who was involved in the original discovery, thinks the writing was used to represent the counting of possessions. Number three, Rohan well, maybe. Codex. I mean, I can't give you an honest theory. It, it could be many things. It could be that, or it could be them keeping stock of whatever they have in food stocks, maybe, or like a, a record of kids. It could just be like, like random marks, it, or it could just be literally nothing. Keep that in mind. It could just be someone drawing on a 
you know, stone potentially. The Rohan Codex was discovered collecting dust at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in 1838. The okay. text is an enigma because nobody has ever been able to decipher the language it's written in, and no author has ever been identified. People have tried their best you're, you're to decipher the mysterious them. text for decades, <laughs> but unfortunately, nobody has ever succeeded. This okay. manuscript contains 450 pages of illustrations and what appears to be gibberish. There's all kinds of bizarre... Yeah, that's just, Guys, that is definitely not gibberish. Um, I can tell you right now, it's too structured. Pictures of the book depicting epic battles, angels, and other Christian themes. The only thing anyone truly knows about the Codex is that the paper it's written on comes from 16th century Italy. Based on this, it's believed that the Rohan Codex was created during that same time, although it hardly helps to solve the mystery. Researchers don't know if the text is supposed to go from left to right or right to left. However, many scholars still consider the book to be legitimate. Some even say that its text could change history if ever decoded, while others believe it's nothing but a hoax. But if the book is a hoax, it's an extremely elaborate one. The first ever appearance of the Rohan Codex they found was it in, in Macedonia? 1743, when it was discovered in a catalog from the library. If this ancient text is just a joke, it's been going on for almost 300 years. Number 2. Unwrapped Dead Sea Scroll Researchers recently found a new way to virtually unwrap ancient scrolls. Instead of physically crumbling? unrolling old scrolls right. that could crumble into right. fragments with the Let's slightest touch, that. experts can now digitally scan them and unfurl them virtually layer layer. on a computer. Like they recently MRI did maybe? this with the En Gedi scroll, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls that was discovered in Israel in the 1970s. The text contains, they scanned it, figured out what the document said without oh sorry guys i just sneezed terribly i had to cut that out guys opening it and read the text for the first time in a millennia this is a big step forward for science it was the very first time experts virtually unrolled and studied a damaged scroll and the implications are huge although the scroll only holds the beginning of the book of leviticus the method can be applied to other more mysterious texts in the coming years Researchers will hopefully be able to see what's written on other damaged Dead Sea Scrolls, potentially revealing shocking truths that could change history forever. Number 1. The Apocryphal Texts I mean, I do like the fact that they've been able to at least scan it. I don't know what the technology was. I'm guessing some type of MRI, most likely, right? Um, definitely not x-ray, I guess, depending on how... Uh, whatever the material is now, at least, because it's not the same as it was before, right? Um, most likely petrified. But here's the thing. Um, I'm glad that they've been able to do that, and I'm glad they're not just trying to just open it like idiots. You know what I mean? There are over 300 <laughs> Christian apocryphal texts in existence, according to Tony Burke from the York University. Tony wrote an entire book on apocryphal texts, which are Christian writings not found in the canonical Bible. Some of these stories are considered strange, while others are absolutely insane. One of these apocryphal texts describes the Let's tale go. of a wizard battle that took place during the construction of one of the earliest churches. Another story tells of a border guard who defied orders and saved Jesus instead of crucifying him. These two stories alone have the potential to change history, right. which is why none of the apocrypha can be... F yeah, that would basically destroy Easter. It would destroy... Uh, like Semana Santa in, in all like uh, Spanish speaking countries. Um, yeah, it would. The, re the, whole re the whole idea of resurrection would be destroyed. Um, so I guess you just. Uh, guys, wow, that's that's rough. I'm not a Christian, so, you know, but uh, that would be rough. I can only imagine. Stories alone have the potential Very to damaging. change history which is why none of the Apocrypha can be found in any modern Bible. The church closed the official canon to... But the crazy part is, is that I think it still should be there. It should still be there. Like, if you're going to believe in something, right, um, like, to the depths of, your, uh, of you, right, you should want to know all of the information around it, right? Like, I had a conversation with someone um, pretty recently regarding the Bible. I've read uh, the Bible six times, and the person that I had a conversation with was not a, like a, they were a Christian. They, they were just period, they were a Christian. And it it kind of it kind of hurts my, my heart a little bit to know that you are a, you call, you're calling yourself a believer, 
are respected, right? But you're calling yourself a believer and you've never read the Bible. I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand that at all, right? Um, but uh, all right. To keep the religious scripture accurate. And that's the way it's, it's rough, been guys. for hundreds of years. However, 2,000 years ago, people had access and read many of these ancient writings. For 400 years, Christians had debates over which texts spoke the truth of Jesus and which writings represented true historical events. It was mm -hmm. around the year 400 AD when the church finally decided which stories were accurate enough to include in the official biblical canon. One of the most recently translated apocryphal texts was written in Coptic, an ancient Egyptian language. It was created about 1,500 years ago and was translated by Paul Dilley, a professor of religious studies. The text describes an event in which the Virgin Mary comes to Bishop Basil in a dream. She tells him about some pillars covered in demonic images that were constructed during the time of the giants. When the bishop goes to remove the pillars, he gets into a spell battle with a group of magic-wielding wizards. If this particular text is to be believed, ancient days were filled with very real warlocks. Right. Thanks for watching. Which of these ancient <laughs> texts do you think is the most important? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let me see. Um, for me personally, um, the most important one of them all would probably be what do we have here. Uh, where are we at? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say um, the Babel text. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to go ahead and say this one here is because I think that that um, should be the most important like historic one like the most relevant of them all right uh because guys that would change what we all think of like the the discovery right i mean i think that would make it even stronger right like humans did this we did this before we thought they could even write <laughs> you get what i'm saying here guys like that would be something i think more important to overall everyone humanity uh there are a couple of like like religious ones, like the Book of Enoch one, Enoch one, I think that would only be relevant to maybe <clears throat> three religions potentially, uh, maybe Muslim, Jewish, Jewish faith, and Christianity, maybe Catholicism, maybe, right? Most likely, yeah, yeah. So I would think those four are probably going to be the most affected by that. But I think that the the Babel text could change the entire globe, not just. A portion of the planet, guys. Um, but all right, listen. Yeah, let me know. Also, uh, which ones? Do you, which ones do you think are, are relevant for you? Right. But yeah, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.